And for more, we welcome in CBS Sports Combat Analyst and co-host of Morning Combat, Brian Campbell, Luke Thomas. Uh, Brian Campbell here in studio, Luke Thomas with us as well. BC, your reaction, you called it and it happened. Yeah, as expected, certainly from the finish there. Whatever the strategy was coming in for heavy underdog Avni Yildirim, we never got a chance to even find that out. This was a mismatch on paper. It played out that way in real life. Why? Because Canelo Alvarez is the best fighter in the world, but now in his third straight fight at 168 pounds, he's showing you why he's also the best super middleweight in the world has two of the four titles trying to close out the year of course by getting the rest but what he did was surgical in here to Avni Yildirim showing no respect for his opponent's power fighting right in the pocket target practice was the words that kept coming to mind watching this it didn't take too long for him to line up that counter right hand to floor Yildirim in round three Yildirim challenged in the corner between rounds by his trainer Joel Diaz to show him something he never even stood up. Fight waved off before round four even started. In some ways, yes, this is Canelo moving the chains. He did do so spectacularly, however. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to get into pearl-clutching territory, and I would not call the making of that fight unethical, but maybe adjacent to that, I mean, that was gross, right? Let's just be clear about it. You can heap a ton of superlatives on Canelo Alvarez, and we are, and I get it. It was a mandatory fight. He was trying to do what a champion is supposed to do, which is it doesn't matter how popular you are. If you have elevated to a certain position by virtue of the rules, you are entitled to an opportunity to contest for this title. And I, as champion, have a responsibility to defend it. So, okay, fine. But we shouldn't have too many of these kinds of fights in the sport. I don't care what the weight class is. That was that was a shellacking. I mean, Yildirim didn't even really ever get going. You heard the commentators on DAZN tonight ask, has he even landed one punch of significance? I'm not sure that he did. What really saved him in the end, let's give credit where credit is due, the corner, Joel Diaz, warning him very clearly, I'm not going to let you out. And because there was really no response, basically the fight ended there. That's good cornering. They saved that guy next extra beating, I, I suppose uh, there's a silver line that should be taken there. Luke, but I, I, I will press you here on the fact how important is it, though, for Canelo to stay active? Um, listen, he knows his body certainly a lot better than me. I'm sure he will profit from getting out here. Uh, obviously, financially, he's going to profit. In no way do I think that, uh, again, you can't, I'm not calling for the end of mandatories, and I'm not calling for some kind of bizarre uh, situation. I'm simply saying this was a little bit weird. So did he get a the ability to stay warm without too much damage? Sure, but I would like his chances on May 8th, even if this was not taking place tonight. Granted, that's just my opinion. It, it's just one man's opinion. But but I do think it's pretty true. BC, when you take a look at this win for Canelo Alvarez, certainly doesn't stack up against his biggest wins of his career. When you go back and you look at this fight, what will your takeaway be? Uh, that this may have been prime Canelo Alvarez, top of the mountaintop in terms of his overall evolution and growth. He is so nasty at 168 pounds. He doesn't have to kill himself to cut down in weight. He retains his speed. He's smarter than every other boxer in there. And oh, by the way, he can deliver the boom when the opening is there. Again, gross mismatch, yes. Means to an end for Canelo. However, for the type of business he's hoping to do in 2021, without question. We won't look back at this fight as any sort of thing we maybe learned except for a showcase of what is the best fighter in the world pound for pound obviously commercially he's the biggest star in the sport and at the very least we don't want to see this fight again right but Canelo already saying he's gonna be back in a couple months that's what you want your superstars to do uh, yeah, I would add, let, let's give some praise to Canelo a little bit more, even though I know BC has been quite complimentary. I'll add a little bit here as well. You really saw um, a, a good reason why Canelo Alvarez has achieved what he has achieved and where he sits in boxing right now, both before he got into the ring and then certainly in the ring. This celebrated figure, certainly amongst uh, other demographics, Jay Balvin coming out, the sort of like, you know, third party validation of his star power. And then he gets in there and you saw big power in the weight class he was fast he had good accuracy he understood his opponent which means he had done his homework this was a real demonstration of this guy's ability canelo alvarez to kind of play the levels as a championship boxer attracting a crowd giving them what they want and then doing surgical work when you get in there bc what does he want to accomplish this year and can he accomplish that 
Look, this is crazy how active Canelo wants to be. We're coming off a crazy 2020, obviously a quarantine year where you were lucky to get the big name fighters in the ring even one time. And if so, it was largely a stay busy fight. Canelo forced into his schedule, of course, in December, facing unbeaten Calum Smith, unifying super middleweight titles. And now with still some uncertainty from the idea of live crowds. Yes, we saw 15,000 socially distanced fans inside a Hard Rock Stadium on Saturday, but still with the lack of the full live gate. Canelo saying, notwithstanding, I want to fight. And I'm going to fight four times this year, which is certainly ambitious. But when he wants two of those to be unification bouts of the final two titles he doesn't have, the WBO won against Billy Joe Saunders that we expect to see on Cinco de Mayo weekend in Las Vegas in May. And then if he can come back against Caleb Plant, the unbeaten IBF champ, you have a fighter who's not only the star of stars, but he's keeping his free agent status. He's got one fight on the deal with Eddie Hearn and Matchroom Sport next. That'll be Saunders. But Canelo's going to go where the titles are, where the difficult matchups are. He has his own sort of vision of the history he's trying to make. Wants to be remembered, of course, as one of the greats, but specifically the greatest fighter in Mexican history. That rich lineage. I like his strategy of just saying, look, I'm going to fight who's out there. You got a belt. I'm going to track you down. I'm going to take it from you. Ambitious, yes. But if anybody can do it, it's Canelo this year. Yeah, remember, before when he was fighting just two times a year, what were the dates? They were in May for Cinco de Mayo and then September for Mexican Independence Day. So you have to imagine you've got your date now with Billy Joe Saunders on May 8th. That's a very good and important and competitive fight. And then, the, as BC indicated, the plant fight is the other premium one he is looking for in the weight class this year. That leaves September. Now we got to see if plant's available. He just finished a mandatory against Caleb Truex to set himself up for a big opportunity later in the year. So that's probably what's going to happen, which means the guy might unify up a weight class or from what he expected him to compete at in just one single calendar year, more or less. That is extraordinarily impressive if and when he pulls that off. To BC's point, it then sets into motion these much bigger and broader conversations about where he stands in the history of Mexican boxing. That's a huge question, and he's trying to thrust himself to the forefront of it. He's got to get through the challenges he has laid out for himself in this year, but as you can see tonight so far so good do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game the highlights the picks the instant analysis no yelling no fake debates no politics hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment